Ashraf Nagpal Freigander and in today we're going to be unboxing and taking a look at the new Samsung Galaxy S5. Now we finally have it in our hand in our office. This device was just launched in India today on the 11th of April 2014. Now this was announced and launched globally at MWC in Barcelona. I was there taking a hands-on view of the device. Now I finally have this in uh, the office here and we're going to be going through the paces. Uh, but like, right now let's go ahead and unbox it. The price on the box is 54,300 rupees and which is a massive price for the device. Uh, but of course it's available for slightly less in the market. Uh, but the price tag of 50,000 and above is uh, very, very expensive according to me. But go ahead, let's go ahead and cut through the box. So first thing inside the box is uh, the Samsung Galaxy S5. As you can see, we have the white color over here, the dotted pattern at the back, the golf ball design, uh, which is over here. Uh, but I'm going to put this to the side for the time being. I'm going to go further in. And we have the usual set of Samsung stuff. So the first thing is the quick start guide, the wall charger, which is a standard Samsung style charger. Again, the standard style in-ear earphones from Samsung along with additional ear tips. The USB to micro USB charging cable. It's a surprise uh, that they haven't used a USB 3 cable like they did on the Note series. Then you have the new style battery, which is a 2800 milliamp hour battery. That's everything from the box of the Samsung Galaxy S5. Let's go ahead and take a look at the device itself. So let's get rid of this plastic from the front of the device. And there's some plastic on the back as well. I'm gonna get rid of that. And hopefully there is no plastic on the sides because it looks fairly clean. And the back is already open. But let's go ahead and take a look at the front. Over at the front, you have a couple of sensors along with the earpiece over here. The front facing camera is a 2 megapixel camera and then you have a nice and large 5.1 inch 1920 by 1080p display. So that's 1920 by 1080p. It is a full HD display. It is a super AMOLED capacitive touchscreen display. You have three uh, buttons at the bottom, two touch capacitive buttons and the main hardware button which is over here. If you look at the right of the device, we have the power lock and unlock button and a tab to pull out the back cover. Over at the top, you have a microphone, an infrared blaster, and the 3.5mm headphone jack. Over at the left, you have the volume rockers. And over at the bottom, you have the USB port, which is covered, and the main microphone, which is right next to that. So this is the USB port. It can take a USB 3 wire, uh, but in the box, you only get a USB 2 wire, which is sort of surprising and sort of upsetting, according to me. Uh, on the back is the new 16 megapixel camera with a 1 over 2.6 inch sensor size and a 1.12 micron pixel uh, size uh, for the pixel. So that's good. There is a bit of plastic on that as well. I'm going to get rid of that. And then you have a heart rate sensor along with the LED flash. Just under that, you have the Samsung logo and uh, the speakerphone at the bottom of the device. Now this is a pearl white color and I'm going to pop it open and put in the battery. If you look at the back cover uh, closely, you can see that it is sealed with a rubber seal to make this device water resistant. So that's a good thing according to us. Uh, your micro SD card and your SIM card goes up in here and uh, you pop in the battery like so. And let's go ahead and power on the device. While this device is powering on, I'll tell you that the Indian version gets a 1.9 GHz quad core plus 1.3 GHz quad core CPU. So it is an Exynos CPU. It's unlike uh, the version that you get globally with this Qualcomm Snapdragon 801. Uh, so this one is a Exynos based uh, device. You also get 2 GB of RAM and 16 and 32 GB storage capacities. Uh, this guy over here is a 16 GB variant. So the minute you power on the device, it reminds you to make sure that the battery door is sealed. And you should do that uh, so that it prevents you from moisture and uh, sort of water damage. Uh, so that your device lasts longer. Now this is the main lock screen of the device. You get your weather information over here. If you pull from the left, you can see the My Magazine UI, uh, like the Note Pro and also sort of like the Blink Feed interface, which is now sitting on the left on the HTC One M8. So you can always pull uh, to the My Magazine interface. It gives you all the latest feeds, etc. A bunch of Samsung widgets are loaded, including the S Health widget, uh, the Geo News widget, 
uh, Galaxy Essentials and Galaxy Gifts, uh, which are preloaded over here. Of course, then you can jump into all applications, uh, a bunch of apps uh, that are preloaded for uh, your consumption, including S Health, S Note, etc. You also have Flipboard preloaded, a bunch of uh, Google applications are preloaded, and of course, you have a Samsung apps uh, sort of uh, application that allows you to download Samsung applications. Now, if I look at the dialer over here, it's a very standard Samsung S dialer with TouchWiz. You can also initiate video calls using the front facing camera. And then, of course, you can jump into your contacts, your call logs, etc. So if you look at the messaging panel over here, you'll see a, a standard sort of Samsung messaging panel. But you can see a new sort of design for the messaging window. Uh, the keyboard is very Samsung-esque and you can get uh, continuous input uh, once you go into settings and set that up. So if you want continuous input, uh, you can enable that from your keyboard settings over here. Now if we jump quickly into settings and before I do that I'll show you the notification panel has been changed a little bit so it's nice and clean now. Uh, it allows you to quickly turn on Wi-Fi, Bluetooth etc along with a bunch of other applications and their ultimate power saving mode which will turn everything into black and white uh, so that you save a lot of battery uh, with the ultra power saving mode. So it takes a bit to get activated but you can see that everything is sort of in black and white now and I'm sort of stuck until it loads it up. So now it is in ultra power saving mode. I'm gonna go and disable that real quick so that we can get back to showing you what the device looks like. So if I quickly jump into settings over here, I'll show you that uh, we have a new style of settings panel as well. It's now sort of uh, laid out in an application sort of format. But if I go into about device, uh, you'll see that it is running Android 4.4.2 which is KitKat out of the box, which is absolutely brilliant. So you get the latest version of Android right out of the box. Now, uh, let me quickly load up our website for uh, checking the browser. It's still loading up the top image and it's done that as well. So really quick and fast and responsive. Uh, there is almost zero lag with the browser, so that's good. I do see a bit of uh, jitteriness happening from time to time, as you can see over here. Uh, but overall, overall the browser seems fairly fast and responsive. If I switch from portrait into landscape, it's taking a fairly long time to do that. Oh, it's actually loaded up an article. It's actually loaded up an article. Now it'll be easier to sort of view from portrait into landscape so that works faster as well. So no complaints with the browser as far as we're concerned. I'm also going to quickly see if I can find a preloaded video for uh, checking on this device. And this is a software update that's also showing up that I'm going to install. So the update is done and uh, while that's happening, uh, while it's finishing that update up, I'll show you a quick look at the original Samsung Galaxy S4. Uh, well not original, it's last year's version and you can see it's considerably smaller in size. Uh, this is slightly more squarish and it had uh, the S4 had rounded edges. Uh, the S5 uh, does have a wider footprint as well as it's thicker than the S4. Uh, it's actually quite uh, thicker than the S4 in terms of in terms of its overall size and thickness. It's also slightly on uh, or it feels slightly heavier and bulkier. Uh, there was also a difference in terms of the camera on the back, uh, whereas uh, the S4 had a 13 megapixel camera, this guy now has a 16 megapixel camera. Um, the processor was almost the same in terms of spec wise, but of course it's an upgraded version of the Exynos processor, so you'll probably see a difference in terms of performance, etc. But you saw that we did a quick uh, update over there, and uh, now it says that the device has been updated. Let's quickly see if uh, we have some videos preloaded and we don't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into YouTube and see if I can play a video for you guys real quick. So in 
this quick look, we can see that viewing angles on this uh, display are pretty good. Uh, the overall brightness or vividness of uh, the display is good as well. The speaker itself is very uh, tinny and low sounding. It doesn't sound that great. I thought that it would be better in terms of sound, but it's not. So uh, overall decent product uh, as far as uh, video consumption is concerned, audio is a big letdown. Uh, we'll be of course doing a full uh, hands-on review with this device, uh, full uh, details of benchmarks and gamings etc. So stay tuned for that. If you have any questions and queries, drop them in the comment section below. And uh, we'll try and cover it up in the full video which should be covering coming up over the weekend. So stay tuned for that. Check out iGAN.in, catch us on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus and make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. YouTube.com slash iGAN, YouTube.com slash iGAN TV for iGAN Network. Thank you guys for watching.